Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I want to share with you a couple of different methods to round the corners of objects in your model, which adds an extra bit of realism that you need when rendering with V-Ray. So we're kind of doing the opposite of what you may have heard or what I maybe suggested in some of my other videos, which is always think about performance, which is don't add stuff you don't need. Definitely don't bloat your model with stuff from 3D Warehouse, if, uh, or at least check the stuff before you pop it into your model, because uh, performance is just, you know, it's always going to be something that we need to think about. We always need to balance the quality and information with time spent working. Rendering is a little bit different, though. Uh, V-Ray doesn't have the same, uh, doesn't deal with information the same way SketchUp does. It's not rendering everything in real time. It likes that detail. It wants as much information as you can feed it because it translates that, basically that translates to realism. So the more polygons or the more, um, again, the more detail we put into our model, the more it's gonna show up as realistic in our final render. So let's go ahead and look at a couple different methods to add that detail right now. I've got my model here. It's just actually part of a larger model. It's kitchen cabinets that I'm working on and also this countertop. I would like to focus on just this countertop because I want to keep this simple for this demo. Um, but of course, it applies to all corners. So, but let's just focus here. As you can see, it was modeled just using the rectangle tool and push pull. So, like most of our models, it's going to have these sharp corners. And a lot of the time, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to go ahead and press render. And let's kick off an interactive render here. And let me sort of zoom in just so I can position this in my VFP, VFB, not P, just so that we can see this so it looks good here. Okay, so that's kind of what we're working with as a starting point in V-Ray. Now, from a distance, that might not matter, but up close, those details will start to matter. So it's actually worth the time to consider, you know, where that view is taken from. So given the fact that this is... Um, Let's just pretend we're going to take this close-up view. So this is important that we're going to put that extra bit of detail in. I'm going to show you two different ways. The first thing we're going to do is modify the geometry in the model. So we're actually going to add the rounded corners to this, um, not, to, not the whole cabinet itself, but to the countertop. So let's do that first by going into the countertop group. And then I'm going to launch an extension for this. So we're going beyond SketchUp here in order to bring in some extensions. And I want to find Fredo Collection and Round Corner. So you can buy Fredo's collection. Basically, these are some of his most powerful, most popular extensions, like Curve Aloft and Joint Push Pull. Those are for sale either individually or you get a discount by buying them as a group. So I'm just going to look at Round Corner for this one. So let's focus on that. You can see that I've got some options here. I'm going to ignore the options in the toolbar because there's really just a couple of things, which is I need to decide which faces get rounded. So if I click a face, it's going to round all the corners, all those edges. And if I click off of a face, it deselects it. And then I can just select an edge. Now, selecting an edge in this case might be good because I maybe don't want to round all the corners. It's going to be adding geometry that doesn't show. So in this case, I'm going to select the edges that show. And then when I'm happy, I can either hit enter or return or just click off of the um, just outside of the area that I'm working. It's going to finish that round corner and you can see it. You can already see it. It's rounded off. And let's pop out of that group. I'm going to turn my hidden geometry on. So I've got a shortcut for that. And you can actually see those edges now. So we didn't have those before. They're in there. Let's go ahead and see what that does. I'm going to kick off a render. We're going to wait as V-Ray does its thing. Shouldn't, be take, shouldn't take too long. And there we go. So what we have here is we've got this really nice round corner. You can see it's already starting to pick up some highlights. Now, when I change the shadow settings, in fact, if I go to, before I change that, I want to show you, um, let's compare that. So, so I'll just go ahead and reload this. I'm going to load the one that we did before. You can see round uh, straight edges, and then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to load the round one. So that's kind of the before and after. You can compare the difference there. Now, if I come over here also and hit the interactive render and adjust my shadows, it might be a little bit easier to see like that highlight that I was talking about. 
that's what's really nice. You get the shadow around those edges and you get that highlight around this top part. In real life, nothing comes together at a 90 degrees. Everything is gonna have even the slightest bevel or edge to it. So I'm gonna stop that there. I'm gonna pop out for a second. I'm gonna turn my hidden geometry. Actually, I'm gonna undo this. So I'm gonna undo this round corner because I wanna go back and start sort of over again because I wanna show you the second way to do it. So I'm gonna undo that. So I'm back to square. Set that aside for just a second. Turn my hidden geometry off. Okay, so now we're back where we started. I think this looks great. That's a, a great method using Fredo's round corner. Now, if you have a lot to do, like if I have to do this cabinet and everything's in different groups, depending on how you modeled it, this may be a group or a component, and this may be a group or a component, it might be a little bit cumbersome to go into each one of those and add that rounded corner and actually round the geometry to every element in your model. So first of all, we don't want to do stuff that doesn't show up in the camera. So think about that. But second of all, it does, you know, again, the nesting, even just clicking in and clicking out of nested groups uh, takes a little bit of time. So I want to show you another method that at least you can consider and decide which one works the best for you. So I'm going to open up my V-Ray Asset Editor. And under this wood maple material, so this maple material I'm using for my countertop, if I'm going to open up the sidebar, so it's sort of advanced settings, and by default, it has a bump map associated with it. And this bump map is for the wood grain. So I don't want to mess with that. We need that bump map. But what I can do is I can come over here and add an extra bump map. And so now I actually have two bump maps. So one of them is going to be for the wood grain, and one of them we're going to use for the corners. So under the type of bump map, what we're going to do is go all the way down to the bottom. And you can see we're looking for this one that says edges. So if I click on edges, and it'll give me a couple of options. Actually, only one thing we were really concerned with, which is the width of the edges. So in this case, I'm going to bump this up to, say, 0.25. I just want to make sure that this is a little bit more visible. And then um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to back out of there. And there's one more setting to change while we're in the setting, while we're in the asset editor, and that's switching the mode from bump map down to local space map. So there's two things you need to do to get the edges to work. You need to select edges as your bump map type, and then switch the mode from bump to local space bump. So let's back out of here. Don't need that for right now. I'm going to go ahead and re-render this. We zoom back in, get in nice and close here, and I'm going to re-render this. I'm going to kick off an interactive render. And you can see actually here, I have my rounded edges. They look really nice. And it's crazy because the geometry is still, it's still actually, uh, these corners come together at 90 degrees. Now this is great because if you wanted to come in here and make a change, uh, let's just say I needed to move this, it's way easier for me to move that 90 degree corner than it would be to move a rounded corner. So not only does this method, the V-Ray method, use less, it has less geometry because it doesn't add any geometry to your model, but it also, it also makes it easier to go back in and manipulate things uh, because once you've rounded the corners, you really can't unround them. And just to kind of show you, I'm going to go ahead and move the shadow settings a little bit. You can see that depending on the shadow angle, that highlight and that shadow is going to pop up, just like we did when we did the rounded corners. Now, it's an illusion. Remember, think about this. It's a bump map, so it's not actually displacing the geometry in your model. It's just kind of telling the render to look like it's rounded. So I don't think it's as good uh, as far as like the actual quality as rounding the corners, but it's so close that, especially when you're just a little bit further away, I don't think you can tell the difference. So I'm going to stop the render there. So I'm going to wrap up here and I'm going to switch my windows really quick because I want to take a second to promote here behind me. We have a course on SketchUp Campus. So if you liked the tips that I shared here, I've got quite a few more in our latest course, which is called V-Ray for Interiors. So we take this kitchen cabinet and we go way beyond that. We look at materials, we look at lighting, we look at assets and where to get them. So that course is free. It's on learn.sketchup.com right now, and the link is also in the description. So don't forget to like, 
share, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you thought of the video, if it worked for you, if it didn't, if there's another way to do it, did I miss something? Let me know. I'm happy to respond. We'll keep the conversation going there. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks.